Who are your heroes? Who's my hero? Who are your heroes? That's a difficult question. Mmm, Batman. Barack Obama. My godfather. It's Obi-Wan Kenobi, <laughs> from, <laughs> St Kenobi from Star Wars. <laughs> I love Harry Potter. I'm a great Harry Potter fan. Pankhurst would be my hero. We don't know where gender roles would be now if it wasn't for the suffragette movement. Muhammad Ali. You know, he's inspired me to be a better person. My grandma's one of my heroes. Aww. Yeah, she, she taught me how to ride a bike. So, what do you think makes a hero? They're the main character, and they're not seen as selfish or immoral. Usually a hero is like big, strong, muscular, good looking. Good guys. It's someone who you can count on to save the day. Well, I think a hero is just someone that inspires people. Harry Potter's pretty cool though. It sounds like we expect a lot from our heroes. Mallory Blackman has written over 70 books, including Noughts and Crosses. What does she think makes a hero? When you're thinking particularly about a novel, do you think that your novels have heroes in them? I think a lot of them do. Um, but again, it depends on your definition of hero. It seems to be a word that's kind of very, it's bandied about a lot now. And it made me kind of think, of what is a hero? So what I try and do is I'm trying to create three-dimensional, real, relatable characters. But some of those characters do step up and do heroic things. And they do things which will cost them dearly. And it might mean that they they will lose their family. And in some instances, they may even lose their lives. But I don't set out to create heroes. They just happen to become that within the telling of the story. So your heroes are brave. They're often a bit awkward. They, they, they kind of make a fuss about things. They're not, they might not be easy to live with. Yes, because they're real people. Yeah. It's, and I think that's so important because otherwise, I think it's very easy to get the idea that a hero is someone who's who descends from on high and they're all perfect and there's not a thing wrong with them. And it's, it's sort of like the superheroes that, that, that are so popular nowadays. When Superman was first created, he, it didn't really do well until they, they or it, it did better after they introduced a weakness. His weakness was kryptonite. And a superhero who has no weakness is boring. And so what I try and do in my stories is when I have people who are going against society or going against convention, it's because they know they can lose something. And I think that that's for me is a hero who who knows that but does it anyway. I think you also uh, wrote at least one episode of Doctor Who. It's always been one on my bucket list to write a Doctor Who, at least one Doctor Who episode. So I feel really lucky I got to do it. And I featured a real heroine of mine, Rosa Parks, who um, did not give up her seat on a bus for a white man and was arrested. And it started the whole uh, bus boycott in, in Montgomery, Alabama. Um, Rosa Parks lost her job. Her husband lost his job. They had to move into a completely different state. I want to turn the tables on you, though, now, Mallory. And I want to say that, you know, for lots of people, you're a hero. You know, you're in Stormzy's lyrics. You know, you're heroic. You work hard. How do you feel about being somebody else's hero? No, I'm not a hero at all. I have problems when people call me a role model, for goodness sake. No, I, what, I, what I hope is that through what I do, I inspire others to do the same or feel, you know what, if she can do it, so can I. Our word hero comes from the ancient Greek word heros. The ancient Greeks certainly had a lot of stories about them, but were their heroes anything like ours? This is a cup from ancient Greece. And if you look closely, you can see a man strapped under a ram. That man's name is Odysseus, a very famous hero in ancient Greece. But you're probably wondering what he is doing strapped under a ram. Let me tell you his story in 60 seconds. The hero Odysseus is headed home from the Trojan War. In fact, he's the cunning so-and-so who came up with the Trojan horse. His ship is thrown off course, and he ends up trapped in the cave of a one-eyed monster who eats some of his men. He and his surviving men get out by blinding the monster and sneaking out hiding under the monster's sheet. He lands on an island where a sorceress turns his men into pigs. He saves them, but then has a year-long romance with her. 
Odysseus and his men have to sail past a terrible sea monster. He knows some of his men will get eaten, but he doesn't tell them. He loses the rest of the men in a storm. Coming home after 20 years is difficult. He finds his house full of men who want to marry his wife and are eating him out of house and home. He and his son execute them all. The end. One thing that Odysseus shows us is that heroes in ancient Greece weren't just good guys. They were more complicated than that. So how does Odysseus compare to other Greek heroes? Well, Theseus killed the man-eating Minotaur, but abandoned his girlfriend on an island. Achilles, the best Greek warrior fighting in the Trojan War, got so annoyed with his commander that he refused to go into battle, leaving many Greeks to die, including his boyfriend. Heracles, who you may know as Hercules, completed 12 tricky tasks, but that was because he had to make up for the fact that he'd killed his wife and kids. Although, he only killed them because his stepmom, the goddess Hera, drove him mad. The one thing that links all Greek heroes is that they go too far. And going too far can be greatness, but it can also be evil, horrible, dangerous. And those extremes ask a question about what it actually is to be normal for a human being. Sometimes the Greeks' heroes might go so far that they sound a bit more like villains to us. Meet Medea. She is one of the most complex and frightening characters in Greek myth. Can you see the sword? With that sword, she's going to murder her own children. Let me tell you the gruesome story in 30 seconds. The hero Jason had been sent on a quest to win a big treasure. He only managed to do this thanks to the help of Medea, who'd fallen in love with him. He took her home, married her, and had two children. But then he wanted to marry the daughter of the king instead. Medea was outraged. She killed the daughter of the king. She killed the king. And then, really to hurt Jason, she killed their children too. And she wasn't even punished. She leaves in triumph. The most famous version of Medea comes in a play called Medea. In that play, Medea starts off as a very sympathetic character as she explains how she's been terribly mistreated by Jason. The play captures something essential about what it is to be a hero, that she can be both sympathetic and violently horrible. Medea's play was a tragedy, which might not be a surprise. And Medea isn't the only example of a horrible tragic hero. In another play, a king called Agamemnon sacrificed his own daughter for good weather so he could sail to fight in the Trojan War. He returns home after the war in a different play and is killed by his wife, Clytemnestra. And that's not the end of it. Their son, Orestes, kills Clytemnestra to avenge Agamemnon. Mallory Blackman happens to be a big fan of Clytemnestra and thinks that what happened to her might be a little bit unfair. I always think, you know what, Clytemnestra, is she, the, is she the villain? Or is she the person who avenged the death of her daughter? It seems to me, p women like that who, who fight back against convention, who fight back against um, just being passive, uh, tend to get punished for it and are seen as the villains of the piece. And I'm, I'm not sure I agree with that, you know. And OK, I, she killed Agamemnon. I'm not saying I'm an advocate of murder. But the point is she was presented as the out-and-out -out villain that the son then had to kill to avenge his father. And women like that I find fascinating. You know, women who say, no, I'm not going to have that. I'm going to fight back against that. In ancient texts, it seems to me the women get punished far more than the men. Like, you know, when Hercules killed his, his wife Megara and his children, he gets to do some tasks for a few years and, that, and he's forgiven. Heroes in ancient Greece weren't just in myths and plays. They could be real people who did remarkable things, but they were pretty much always men. They could be an athlete, like this boxer here, who looks like he's just finished his fight, exhausted and rather bruised. But let me tell you a story about a boxer that will show you how odd ancient Greek heroes were. You can have 60 seconds this time, Simon. There was a boxer called Cleomedes. He went to the Olympic Games. 
where he won, but he was so brutal he killed his opponent. And his prize was withheld. He went back to his hometown and the citizens ignored him. He got so angry, he went into the school of the town and he pulled down the central pillar holding up the roof and killed all the children. He ran off pursued by the parents who were enraged with him and he went into a temple, jumped into a box, died and when they opened the box there was nothing to see. The baffled citizens decided they need to get an oracle to find out what to do. And the oracle said, honour him because he is no longer mortal, he is a hero. That's a different sort of hero. Someone who did something remarkable, but remarkably horrible, remarkably violent, but remarkable nonetheless. And that's what makes him a hero. They raise a lot of questions, these heroes. But the main one might be, what are heroes for? I think in our modern world, we use heroes as perfect figures, really great figures we try and live up to. I think in the ancient world, heroes were more of a mix of good and bad. I wonder whether it wouldn't be better if our modern day heroes were a bit more complicated, better for understanding heroes, and more importantly, better for understanding ourselves.